internet friends good morning welcome or welcome back to sustainable sierra youtube if it's your first time visiting me here hi welcome my name is sierra and i'm an american who lives in england and i make videos of my family's life here or whatever it is i'm interested in or really excited about when i sit down to film as you guys can probably tell by the title of the video, I'm going to be doing another book review today, which is very exciting because I'm very selective of my book reviews because I don't do them a lot, but when I do, I want them to be really special and really good. And today's book review is very, very special to me because it was actually written by a close university friend of mine called Amanda Finn. And that book is this book here, and it is called my first big feelings drawing an activity book. I know I wasn't focused right on it because I didn't want to get the title wrong, but look at this book before we even get started. Is this not absolutely gorgeous and beautiful? I've only had it in my possession for a couple of days and I'm obsessed. And I'm trying not to flash you guys too much with the ring light on the cover, so I'm gonna put it down. Backstory is a couple of weeks ago, my friend Amanda reached out to me on Facebook, maybe it was Instagram, I can't remember which one, and she asked me if I wanted to help her promote her book, and of course I said yes. Originally, she was just asking me to do an Amazon review, which I did as well. However, um, I suggested that I make a video for her just because we've been friends for so long. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the book and then we're gonna take a look inside of it and I'm gonna mix the inside part along with my review because my review is very closely connected to the content of the book. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So as I said previously, Amanda and I met in maybe 2009, which makes me feel kind of like a dinosaur. Uh, when I really think about it, I can't believe it was like nearly 20 years ago that we met, which is crazy. But we met in university, as I said, we were part of the same Christian group and we had a lot of the same friends and we actually went on our first trip to China. Well, my first trip, trip to China, Amanda was part of the project and that's really where we bonded and kind of solidified our friendship. And we've been friends since, which is really cool. Amanda herself has an amazing career as an educator. When I met her, I think she was starting her student teaching, so she's a little bit older than I am. But um, even back then, she had a huge passion for teaching. And then after graduation, she spent over 10 years teaching in two different countries and a lot of different schools. And so she has a ton of experience with elementary and she also taught multiple grades. Fast forward, of course, you know, nearly 20 years later, we're both moms now. And as a mom, she has two adorable little daughters that you can see on her Instagram page. So she created a handful of books for them. The newest one, as I already mentioned earlier, is the Big Feelings Drawing book that I'm reviewing today. And she wanted to make it for her daughters because her daughters not only love sitting down and drawing and scribbling and things, but they also really just like animals and things like most kids, and so the whole point of the book was to create something for her daughters, not only to enjoy themselves, but after she made it, she probably figured, you know, the other kids would like this too. So she published a book, and now it's available for anyone who has little ones to enjoy. So um, inside of the book, as it already says, it's the My Big Feelings book. I'm gonna stop flashing it around just because I think the light is kind of distracting. Okay, so that's enough about Amanda and I's history. Now let's actually get into the contents of the book and why the book was written and all of that fun stuff. So Amanda, like myself, is a mom and she has actually two beautiful little girls and she actually wrote this book with them in mind. Her girls are not yet school age, so they're in that really creative preschool era and so she wanted to write and draw this book for her two daughters who really love writing and drawing. So basically the My First Feelings drawing book is designed to teach children pre-writing skills, emotional intelligence, and enhance creative skills. So basically what that means is it helps them learn how to identify their feelings as well as develop those creative skills. So a lot of children it comes naturally to, some of it doesn't, which I'm going to talk more about in my review section because I think that's really important. But it's also designed because she wanted to inspire families to have meaningful conversations about feelings and animals in life. The book itself is also designed to enhance creativity and help children develop fine motor skills. So with those goals of the book in mind, let's take a look inside and I'm going to talk about my review. The first thing I really love about this book overall is just that the artwork inside is just really beautiful and unique um, and very simple, which is really good. Again, we're going to look a closer look at it, but the drawings are just simple line drawings that are really easy for kids to follow and it'll make it easy also for them to replicate um, as they get older and as they practice and decide to take the drawings from the book elsewhere and create their own drawings, which is really neat. But what I really love about the book, it's probably one of my favorite parts of the book, is actually on page 26. So on page 26, there's actually a little feelings chart, which is really cute. I don't know if you guys remember the feelings chart that was popular probably still is popular, but when I was in high school, we had this magnet that was given to us that had I am feeling and it had like a little square on it. Do you know which one I'm talking about? And it, but it had the problem with that is it had like 20 different feelings on it, which is way too much for little ones. However, this one here only has six different feelings. And I mean, they're not the super complex ones, but when you're between the ages of four and seven, your feelings at least what you can express for your feelings aren't that complex, you know what I mean? 
But what's nice about it being in the book is you could take it out and laminate it and put it on your refrigerator, maybe give your child a marker, and then in the moments that they're really upset and breaking down, or just when you're doing a little check-in, you could have them circle which one they're feeling, and then you guys can talk about it, which I think is really cool. Next thing that I think is really interesting and I appreciate about the book is that the pages in the book and the feelings mentioned in the book are actually paired with specific animals that kind of would represent that feeling. My favorite example of that is the excited frog, which is on page 31 of the book, which is right here. And it's kind of hard to see. Um, I'll try to do like an overlay of it or something. But as you can see, the excited frog is super, super adorable. But what I like about the excited frog is that, you know, kids relate, can relate to it. And by that, I mean, when children are really excited, for about something what do they do and what do frogs do all the time hop around so when kids think about that you know it helps them to identify that feeling a little bit better which is really cool there's also one I think about the lonely lion in here um, I can't find it right now but the lonely lion is the same if you guys know anything about lions lions are solo creatures and they like to be by themselves but being by yourself is kind of sad and so you know if kids are by themselves they might feel the same way and lions are awesome so that would be a really cool connection for them to make moving on to the next thing about the book that i really like is that the book is designed not only to engage like the creativity in their mind there's also a bit of exercise involved because if you're a parent of small children which i know a lot of you guys who are watching this are little ones have a lot of energy and sometimes they just need to get their wiggles out so within the book there's a few pages where exercise is included for example on here on page 34 it says exercise and move play and there's a little poem about what kids can do and honestly little man had a look at this book and he read this poem and he was very excited so it says hop like a frog swing like a monkey slide like a snail flutter like a butterfly, jump like a kangaroo, crawl like a crab. And that's exactly what Little Man was doing. He asked me to read this poem to him two or three times so he could like copy it and that was really fun. And then a couple of pages later, there's another one that is the animals yoga, which is really fun for kids. They can wiggle around, even if they're not doing the poses right, you know, just pretend to be a cobra or pretend to be a butterfly or a dog. It's silly, but that's what little kids love and that's what little kids respond really well to. So I thought that was really great. Also, another thing that I love is this book also encourages your children to get outside. For example, if we go turn to page 54, she includes a little nature scavenger hunt, which looks really fun that you could do in your garden or if you live in a really snowy place, you could do this in like maybe a film or just looking at pictures or something like that. But basically the idea is that kids can go around outside and look and find each of these things. And then you can either have them like cross them off on their book or put little stickers or something. Again, you could take it out, laminate it and put like real stickers on it and they'd be really easy to take off or wash off if you have like wash off markers, which would be really good. And then the last and final thing as far as the content of the book that I really love and appreciate is when you go towards the back of the book, past the little certificate of completion, which let me just show you that really quickly. It's super adorable. I love it so much. Um, you can give your child when they complete the entire book, which, you know, kids love little certificates. So that's really special. At least my kid would like that. Anyways, enough about my kid. Um, if you turn to the next few pages, you'll see there are some practice pages here where your kid can practice the exact same pictures that were in the front of the book, which if the kid, for example, really enjoyed the picture or maybe they feel like they didn't do a very good job and they want to give it a second try, that is there for them. And once again, talking about the pictures, I mean, I really like them because I feel like they have very, very simple drawings on them, which are really good for children to try to copy, um, which I'll talk about more in a second. But yeah, that's really cool. And now we're going to move on and I'll tell you guys my overall opinion of the book because I'm sure you guys have inferred that I think it is great. However, I do want to share a few more things. So one of the things I love about this book is that this book seems to be very well rounded and kind of takes like a holistic approach to children getting interested in drawing and creativity and animals and feelings, which is really, really good. In general, you know, children are very intuitive and a lot of times they're able to recognize things outside of themselves and especially with the animals because they love animals so much it helps them to make that special connection. Do you know what I mean? But um, in general, I think this book is amazing for all children between the ages of four to seven. I think that my son probably would have outgrown it around age six or so just because I feel like he's very advanced with his drawing and things. And right now he's drawing anime characters and you know, Spider-Man and all those things. But this book overall would be really good for any child, but specifically I think it'd be really good for children with either autism or children with attachment issues. And the reason for that is because um, Little man's not, but little man has a few friends that are on the spectrum. If you know anything about neurodivergent people, neurodivergent people often have a hard time understanding feelings and recognizing feelings. And because understanding and recognizing feelings is the entire purpose of the book, 
this would be really good for them and again it kind of presents kind of as a coloring book the children might not even honestly realize their learning feelings and they just might think that they're coloring and having a good time so it's a really soft gentle non-threatening way to teach them that which is good um also this book could be really good for children who come from a trauma background so if you are a adopt parent via adoption like i am or if you are a foster parent or if maybe you have like a blended family and there might be some trauma there or something i don't know um those books could be really good because children with trauma or children who have switched home many times often either have walls up and have a hard time identifying their feelings or maybe they missed that milestone when they were really young in being able to develop their feelings also i've mentioned this before but my one of my favorite things about the book is that in general the photos inside the book and the drawings are very simple and easy to repl replicate um, which is really beautiful even like this one there's entire scene but older children who are learning to draw could literally just copy this picture and they have an entire beautiful picture even if they're not if they're not confident so like for example when little man first came home um he'd been home with us maybe a day or so we were still in china and so one day we were in the hotel and i gave him a book and some pencils for him to draw with and i handed it to him he wasn't sure what to do with it he you know i mimed scribbling for him and drawing and so he picked up the crayon and just went and then he was done because it turned out little man actually didn't have really any experience with having been able to draw again i don't want to share too much of the story but throughout his journey of learning to draw in color he always wanted me to model things for him and then he would copy it so with this book because the drawings are so simple in this picture for example on the bird it shows you little pieces step by step how to draw the picture because if you're a child and you don't have the experience with drawing or maybe you're not confident being given this to draw could be really scary, but if you look at it, you know, one piece at a time, that could be a lot easier for them and kind of removes that scariness of, you know, not wanting to do something wrong or, you know, not wanting to look like you don't know what you're doing. Does that make sense? So with all of that having been said, that includes my review of Amanda Finn's My First Big Feelings Drawing Activity book. Um, as you guys can tell, again, I'm a huge fan of this book. I think that it's beautiful. I think Amanda has put a lot of time and thought into it. A lot more than I guess I would have expected for a book for four to seven year olds. It really does have a lot of really deep feelings on it, which again is the whole goal of the book, but I think overall that's really beautiful. If you enjoyed the review and you're interested in purchasing a copy either for your children or maybe your grandchildren or some children in your life, or maybe if you're a school teacher and you have funding to get multiple books for your classroom, these books are actually really affordable. Right now, I think the book is only about $10 on Amazon on, which may or may not change so if you want to get a copy I suggest getting it immediately but it's available on US Amazon Amazon UK and Amazon Australia and a couple of other ones so I'll put that down in my description for you but um, overall again the book is well worth it and if you buy a copy of this book you will not be sorry and I'm not just saying that because she's my friend I'm saying that because this book is incredible as you guys have seen before another thing to note is that Amanda actually does have a couple of other books on Amazon which I think there is a like my first numbers book or something like that and there's also a Christmas one that was launched relatively recently so I'll put those in my description as well but yeah that's it so um, if you have any questions for me or any questions for Amanda you can put them down in the comment section of the video and I will reach out to Amanda or I will answer them myself if it's a question about my thoughts on the book be sure to check out this book and Amanda's other books on, on the Amazon storefront like and subscribe before you leave and I'll see you guys in the next video thank you guys for watching bye